One of the things I noticed long after buying this 280SL is that the mileometer wasn't working. The trip counter doesn't work and the mileometer doesn't go around. Um, so we took the thing to pieces and noticed that there was a cog inside the mechanism broken. Apparently it's quite a common problem and we set about ordering a new cog from Turkey of all places, which was the cheapest source. Now almost one month later, one month later, look what should arrive in the post. Just at the point that I was about to write to eBay and say my part hadn't arrived, this arrives in the post. It's the smallest thing I've ever bought on eBay, I think, and it cost about £8.37. The part was £3.37, the postage was £5. But just to warn you, if you do buy from Turkey, almost a month to get here. So we're going to take the instrument um, cluster to pieces, at least that part of it, and see if we can replace this cog. First thing to do is to unplug these two wire clips. Yeah, just to squeeze them together. They should just pull out. Mine won't actually attach in the first place, but they should just pull out. That'll give you a little bit more room to work with. Next up, you've got four bolts. Three of them are the same size, and one of them is longer. One, two, <coughs> three, and the longer one goes through this here. Okay, and then we're going to very carefully just lift that out. There we go. That comes out relatively easy. Just be careful to get these wires out of the way. Don't pull anything, etc. You might find it easier taking some of these off to get a bit more clearance on the wires. But um, once you've lifted that out, let's have a look at the back of it. Okay, we can't see the cogs yet, so we're going to um, undo those four screws. Once you've undone those four screws, you can just lift the cover off and we can start to see the mechanism here. Now, obviously some moisture has got in there at some stage and that's a little bit rusty, so we'll be taking that off, attempting to clean it. But what we're really interested in is the white, small broken white cog. Carefully, you can see up here, there are little bits of broken cog. There should be a cog on there, hopefully the one that they've sent me. And you can see there's little broken bits inside this plastic casing. So we're going to take this plastic casing off, clean out any broken bits, and just slide the new cog over there. And in theory, if they've sent us the right cog, that should be it. That cover comes off. It's just held on by two screws. Just lifts straight off. Um, I'm holding it up this way just so those cogs don't fall off. And if you look inside there, you can see just the remnants of the old okay. cog. There's the cog. And we're going to try and fit it onto there. But whatever that green stuff is, it's going to have to come off because it looks like the hole in the cog is just big enough to fit over that shaft, which I'm hoping that that green stuff is not actually bonded in some way to that metal. Otherwise, we may find we actually have to widen the hole in the actual cog. But let's just see if that just slides off without damaging that anything. shaft. It's connected to that white circle there. So we're going to undo those two screws there, take off that casing and see if we can pull the shaft out yeah, this that way. shaft out, you would need to take the whole thing to pieces, which is quite possible and doable, but I'm not going to get involved in that. So we're faced with two choices, or really just one choice. One is to get that shaft out and try and get that green uh, metal bit off somehow, which may not even be possible, or to modify, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Or to modify the part that they've sent us and simply drill a bigger hole into it. And if that doesn't work, we've only lost eight pounds and then um, next time we order one will be slightly wiser. So I think that's what we're going to try in the first instance. According to these calipers, the diameter is exactly three millimeters. Okay, it's a bit Heath Robinson, but we're going to attempt to widen di that diameter of that little cog from two mil to three mil without ruining it all. What I've done here, this is just a set of grips that already have teeth in them, so that's not going to spin around. I've just tensioned them. I don't want to squeeze them too hard and damage risk damaging that cog. Um, so I've just tensioned them with elastic band. I've clamped these solidly to here, and I'm going to start off with a We've got that about as close as we're going to get it. Is that right? I'm going to start off with a two mil 
drill, which is what that is, and then step it up to two and a half and then try it with a three mil, hopefully without damaging that, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Okay, that's two and a half mil. Okay, this is the three mil drill and it'll either disintegrate when we try and drill a bigger hole in it or it'll work. Let's go for it. Okay, that fits on there snugly, but the only thing I've done wrong is that that small cog has one flat edge and I think that that flat edge needs to be at the back, so we probably need to take that black cog off first. Yeah, that's better. That flat edge probably stops the white cog sliding off, um, although it is pretty snug on that shaft. So now we're just going to clean up um, the little rusted area there, put the whole thing back together, reinstall it in the car, see if it works. We're just, just going to use a brass brush, soft brass brush to clean that. You can get a set of three brushes from Wilkinson's for a pound. We won't be needing the steel one, but we might just use the nylon one just to take away any dust, etc. Two screws out. That metal plate there around the magnet comes off and we can give that a good clean. Hidden areas of rust. We're just going to go over that with a soft brass brush and clean it up. Putting this bit back together is simply the opposite of taking it apart. But just bear in mind that that plastic cover there is not symmetrical. It has a cutout there which goes on the copper wire side. And the top of it there needs to slip underneath that green component to get it back in. Next up, you just need to put on the plastic plate that covers those cogs. Plate on. You can see why it's important to get that little white cog on the right way around. You've got to take that black cog off and have the flat bit at the back because the plastic casing stops that black cog coming off and that little flat edge there stops the white cog coming off although it should be on there pretty solid on that shaft. We just need the white casing on there, there's nothing special about that. Those four rubber grommets there are the, where the screws go into. Tighten those screws, you're screwing into plastic and you don't want to risk cracking that. And we're just going to slot this in now under the wires and then tighten that down. The only tricky thing about getting the white thing is the shaft on the end of there fits into a button. So you're best off doing that on your knees like that so the button's not pressed flat. Otherwise you might have a trick, it might be a bit tricky getting that shaft in. It's time just to click the wires back in like that and tighten down those bolts. the instrument panel in should just be a simple matter of connecting up all of this bunch of wires it looks a lot more complicated than it is we're going to start off by just connecting that additional earth that somebody's wired in next up is this single wire here which i seem to remember clicks just over there like so whoops where are we like so um, then we've got a vacuum hose. We're going to have to do this with two hands. There you have it. Um, we connected all the wires, including the vacuum hose there for the fuel gauge. We're just going to slide this baby back in. It's all the way in yet because I just want to double check that all the gauges and lights etc are working before we do that. So I'm just going to reconnect the battery and then turn the ignition okay, on. First start after several months. Let's see how it goes. Well, let's see if it starts, I should say. Look at that. Okay, so next up we're just going to check and see whether everything works. Indicators. The, the, the handbrake light switch does not seem to work. We're going to have to have a look at why that's not working. Um, what about the lights? Wipers are working. Well, the dashboard lights are working, that's good. Okay, I can see that none of these light bulbs are working on here. So we're just going to have to have a little look and see why none of the dashboard. 
dash lights are working. Okay, let's try that again. The ignition light's on, low fuel light working. Can't remember what that is for. Still haven't got any... Haven't got any um, handbrake lights. Flashlights work, which is good. Full beamer was working, but isn't now. We'll just have to double check. I suspect that's just the loose earth in there. Loose connection in there, but that's now fixed. And everything is working as it should. Last but not least, just before we put the steering wheel back on, we're just going to tidy up this here, which we managed to chip. Uh, this dash was painted black. And we're just gonna put some plastic adhesion on there, some primer and a little bit of black paint, and that'll be as good as new. So that's it. Just need to put the speaker cover back on here. Steering wheel, um, the under, dash trim that we took out earlier, connect the interior lights up, fuse box panels down there, and that is that done. These are just speaker wires here, I've got to decide what to do with them. That's pretty much the front of the car done.